Hey, good Sunday morning, everybody. This is meteorologist Brad Panovich with an update on our severe weather risk today. Things are unfolding kind of uh, kind of interesting today with two distinct bands trying to form. And that's going to be the key part of the forecast today of how things unfold. A lot of wind energy in the atmosphere. So let's get right to what's going on right now. The first thing I'm noticing this morning is we've got two warm fronts analyzed with a lot of severe weather going on in Georgia, Tennessee, down into the Florida Panhandle. I'm going to stop this. And if you look carefully, we've got one warm front here, which is causing some showers over western North Carolina, another one up here. But here's the main system pushing to the east. So the question is, is this going to be wave number one? And then are we going to see a secondary wave form along the front later this afternoon? Um, I think that's the key part. Now, the showers you see over us today, there are there's some lightning strikes in there, but this does not look severe. We'll keep an eye on this. It's really this first band here that we've got to watch and then see if additional development occurs along this band back to the west. I'm going to show you the radar and satellite together with the temperatures just to show you what's going on um, as far as cloud cover because that's going to be a key part today. What kind of cloud cover are we going to have? The clouds hang tough. That helps us out to a certain extent. I don't think it helps us out as much as we would like because of the wind energy. But the one thing for sure, any breaks in the clouds makes this a much more dangerous situation. And we're starting to see some of that uh, down to our south. And that uh, clearing is moving up to the north as that warm front lifts. So as we go into the afternoon and the atmosphere destabilizes uh, in this area, that's an area we'll watch. Now, what you're looking at here is what we call the significant tornado parameter. It's already starting to increase a little bit in western North Carolina and along this line. The other thing I'm keeping an eye on is that thunderstorm fuel. You can see it's pretty low, so there's not an overlap of fuel and um, significant tornado parameter. But down to the south, we're starting to see that cape or that thunderstorm fuel start to build. So let's go back and recap you know where the out outlook says the highest risk is today you see the area in red from pennsylvania all the way back down into the western carolinas and a big area of orange which is the medium threat which includes every square inch of north and south carolina so everybody in the southeast has a threat for severe storms this afternoon but how is this going to unfold so let's start looking at the guidance to kind of look and see what what's going to happen so let's look at the future cast first and then we'll backtrack and show you some of the ingredients and why the future cast is probably more concerning than you think. So this is a look at what the model thinks is happening right now. It's doing a pretty good job with this cluster over us and then this secondary line back to the west. But watch what happens this afternoon. We're going to go to about lunchtime to 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock. So this is 2 o'clock. Big cluster of showers and storms. Some of these could be strong to severe. Um, right around 1 to 2. So early afternoon time frame. That starts to push through. And then you see another line forming along the cold front back here in Tennessee. That one starts to push east by 6, 7, 8, 9 o'clock and crosses the Piedmont right around 10. So the, the secondary line is something to keep a close eye on, the potential that it could be severe as well. So the, the guidance still hinting at this kind of double line impact of severe weather moving in our region. One moving in from the west and then the secondary line coming in later tonight. So if that unfolds, we might have two distinct waves of, of thunderstorms. And just to show you the wind energy associated with this, this is the upper level winds and at 500 millibars. And you can see the strong wind energy. So even without heating the day, you get a real good idea on the amount of wind energy that's going to be moving in here right around sunset. Really, uh, really big setup here. So let's look at um, one of the things I'm going to look at here. If this will let me look at it. Uh, why won't let me look at this? Uh, we're going to look at some of the updraft helicity I showed you earlier. Well, I can show you that in a different place. But um, we'll go to this, this guidance and show you that updraft helicity. So I'm going to turn everything off here so it's not real cluttered. And we'll go back and look at that updraft helicity, which is something I, I really pay close attention to just to see where those rotating storms are. And you can see as we go into the afternoon hours, we'll stop this right around uh, 2 p.m. You can see the tracks. There, there's a couple cells in here, a couple in the foothills, one across the sand hills. That's 2 o'clock, 3, 4, 5 o'clock. So you see these cells, one, a couple of them coming across the Charlotte area. There's definitely indication of some rotating storms moving in. And even that secondary line, you can see there's indications that there could be rotating cells in that. So the potential is certainly going to be there for rotating cells within these two lines that approach from the west. Now I showed you the outlook earlier and one thing I want to show you in the outlook is that's the overall outlook. Let's look at the probability of tornadoes and I'll widen this out. The brown area is the 5% chance of seeing a tornado. The green 
is the 2% chance of seeing a tornado. Um, probability of hail, you've got a nice big 30% uh, probability of hail in that kind of mustard shade. Um, and then the wind probability even higher. Um, excuse me, that was 15%. This is 30% um, probability of wind. So you see how the hail and wind threats are, are higher, but tornado, 5% chance of a tornado is pretty significant. Um, and that, that means within 25 miles of any point. So again, we're in that brown area where there's a 5% probability of seeing a tornado uh, within 25 miles of any point on the map. And when you look at the, the, this, you know, the guidance here, you see this rotating thunderstorms moving across. So the potential is certainly still there. And the concern is going to be the sunshine. Again, we don't want to see the sun today. I know it sounds always weird when you hear, when I hear, hear me say that, but, um, yeah, this is a situation where, if we see these breaks in the clouds, which are developing down here, really start to break out ahead of this main line. And if there's any breaks here, then the secondary line will form. But again, just to time this out, um, I'm going to go back here and turn all this off. And we'll do a timing of this rain. Let me turn the model data off so we're not confusing with current. So here's the current line. So that, that line is probably going to be here right around 1 to 2 p.m. And again, you can see there's been a couple warnings, a couple tornado warnings down here in, in Georgia and Alabama and a couple tornado watches. So I suspect at some point we'll see some type of watch issued for our area um, as we go into the afternoon. The other thing I was going to show you is the significant tornado parameter. So this is from the same model guidance. And let me back this up so you can see it. So this is a, basically a 1 to 10 scale, the probability of seeing a tornado. Um, it's a parameter we use called STP, or Significant Tornado Parameter. And I'll go into the afternoon hours. We'll stop this right around lunchtime. And you can see it starts creeping up around 3 or 4. As we get towards mid-afternoon, 2 o'clock, it's around 4 or 5. There's a couple spots that are approaching 6. Um, you see some 5s and 6s showing up around 3 p.m., 4 p.m. There's some 7s showing up out towards Wadesboro, um, 8 p.m., excuse me, uh, 6 p.m., 7 p.m., and then right around sunset, 8 p.m., you see that next big surge right there, sevens, eights, um, even some nines showing up around Charlotte South. So you can see the, the guidance all wants to hint at maybe two waves of severe storms moving through, one early afternoon and one right around sunset. So I think we need to plan for that kind of setup because that's, I've seen several runs of that since last night that we have these two waves of thunderstorms heading our way. So just to recap, we'll go back and um, just for timing purposes, I'm going to pull up the model guidance here again, um, just so you're really clear on this, the two separate waves of thunderstorms and I'll load it real quick. You see the first wave approaching early afternoon, 1 to 3 p.m. And then the secondary wave right there, that's around 8, 9, 10 o'clock. So sunset and after, and then moves into eastern North Carolina. So that's what we'll be watching this afternoon. It's a day to stay weather aware. We're kind of now in uh, watching the radar mode. Um, the short range forecasting will help quite a bit to see where things will develop in the next couple of hours. We're in that mode where you need to have a plan, have a way to get a warning, and you need to stay weather aware from roughly noon today to now about 10 o'clock tonight. So I'd give it the maybe maybe one o'clock, one o'clock to 10 p.m. time frame. And again, there could be one wave at the beginning of that time frame and another wave at the end. Of course, I'll have you covered throughout the afternoon and into the evening on NBC Charlotte, social media, digital, every all platforms. Have a safe and happy Sunday, everybody.